Well, that was me shooting in Halifax, creating some black and white results, a format that I want to talk about in this video. But before that, I quickly want to tell you about a new ebook that I have available. This one is called 26 Assignments, and it's all about some great mini projects for you to try with your camera. So this book follows on from my A to Z of improving your photography from last year, and is a compilation of a series of e-guides I released as part of my E6 subscription. Brought together in ebook form, it's now available to purchase separately if you want, or it's free as part of my E6 subscription. Follow the links below for full details. So I, like many, started off as a colour photographer. Or maybe if you're old enough, you did actually start off with black and white. I shot using print film for a few years as I taught myself the basics. And then I had my mind blown when I tried colour transparencies. It was Kodachrome 64 at first, and then my mind was blown again when I tried Fuji Velvia for the first time. Now colours were larger than life itself. The saturation, the vibrancy and the contrast were off the scale. And of course, there were the shadows. Unlike digital, Velvia gave you no shadow detail. They were as God intended them to be. Shadows. It was all colour in my photography then. Colour landscapes shot for colour magazines, colour calendars, colour front covers and colour brochures. But in these formative years, I also learned about colour temperature the colour wheel, using warm colours, cold colours, learning about colour harmony and colour contrast. Black and white was around at the time, but probably seen as a, a bit of an arty medium. But to shoot black and white really meant owning a dark room and developing it yourself, and I wasn't really into all that. My first introduction to black and white then came with a unique black and white transparency film called Agfa Scala. Black and white with all the convenience of colour transparencies that I was used to. Back then, I probably didn't use black and white to extremes. I no doubt made all the usual mistakes of when and how to shoot black and white. Although being a black and white film, at least I was shooting it in camera. Nowadays, shooting black and white is a much easier process. No special film required, no darkroom. You do have to process it yourself, of course, but it's often just a click of an option button in Lightroom, and therefore dead easy to do. Though you can shoot black and white in camera and let the camera do the processing too with JPEGs. So black and white has become what my photography is all about now. And I would even say I probably shoot more black and white than I do color now. So what's the appeal of black and white? Why do we still need to shoot this way? And how do you decide when to shoot with this medium? And how do you take the best black and white images? One, two, one, two, three, four. So the first thing I think you need to realize is that black and white should never be an afterthought, a second choice. If it doesn't work in color, that's not the reason to try it in black and white instead. Therefore, the decision to make a black and white result needs to be made in camera at the time of shooting. You can convert the raw file in post-processing rather than relying on a JPEG, but the decision to do that needs to be made in camera, on location, when you press the shutter with the scene or subject in front of you. You can take a black and white JPEG as well as a reference, as a reminder if you want, but you really need to take the shot with a black and white end result in mind. If this is not your current practice and way of working, then this may be why your black and white images don't have the impact they deserve. So black and white images can work where color images may fail. And yes, you can get a successful black and white result on a dull day where a color result may look just a bit too flat. But there's still other reasons why black and white will work here too. And therefore there's, there's no guarantee that the black and white will work if those other factors aren't considered. Black and white is more about shape and form than a color capture. You're reducing the scene to simple shapes and form, and it's therefore often about the outline shape of the subjects rather than the color within. So instead of colors and the color palette, you're relying simply on different shades of gray. 
And these, just like colour, often rely on contrast. Contrast ranging from the bright whites to the dark shadows, and all the other tones in between. Therefore, black and white relies on light for that contrast, and therefore black and white excels on bright sunny days too, where the contrast is higher. An overcast day just reduces this and uh, makes the results more subtle. The contrast, therefore, helps form different shapes in a scene, and without colour, the end result can simply be about those shapes. But whilst in colour photography you are trying to match colours and, and place colours in an orderly form in your result, be that complementing colours or contrasting colours, warm colours against cold colours, for instance, in black and white you have to understand how those colours get converted, how those colours will render in black and white. Will certain colours take on a similar tone and therefore create a flatter looking result? Or will they contrast nicely for impact? So it, it takes time to learn to see in black and white to the point where you can capture successful black and white images with your camera still in its default colour mode perhaps. Or by looking at the world naturally through an optical viewfinder. With digital, you do have the assistance of your camera. And of course, you can put the camera into the monochrome mode to assist your vision of this medium. The resulting JPEG can be used for reference when converting the raw file, as I say. Now, to make the conversion in digital, you can just use your standard raw processor, the one you use for your color shots, but for many years, I used Nick Silver FX software to make my conversions. And this was a great and powerful processing tool for black and white and offers a huge range of tools to manipulate your image. Now I find that I can get the end result that I want, the result I envisage and shoot for when I press the shutter simply by using my normal raw processor, which for me is Adobe Camera Raw. I do have a preset for my black and white results, one that I've made myself that gives me a nice basic high contrast result. With this applied, I can then tweak this to, to give me the result I want. I will adjust the contrast, tweak the curves and use the color mixer sliders where needs be to adjust the tones. Some localized dodging and burning applied in Photoshop to the resulting TIFF completes the result to my liking. Now, as I say, I, I think I shoot more black and white these days than colour, simply as I have changed the way I see the world. I'm drawn less to the, the pretty views, the natural beauty we have in nature, and instead I now see the beauty in different things. I like simplicity, and I now see the world more in simple shapes than I used to. My images have gone from highly saturated results using Velvia transparency film to desaturating my colour results in digital. I used to use a polarising filter for every shot to saturate those colours further, but now I rarely use this filter at all. It's a filter that still works with black and white though, and can be used effectively to increase contrast. In a way, I now see black and white as how photography maybe should be. Some of the most striking and famous captures were taken in black and white. And that applies to landscapes too, with the great Ansel Adams, who was a keen advocate of black and white, a master even, in the format. Black and white offers this art form of ours, photography, something special then. It helps create a mood that colour cannot replicate. It can capture the world slightly removed from reality, as the results are not how we're used to seeing. The world does look different, reduced to grey tones then, there's a, a certain quality, a finesse when it's stripped down and reveals subjects simply as shapes and tones. Sometimes, just sometimes, colour can get in the way. So the more you can simplify a scene, the better and easier it becomes to capture. A complicated scene in black and white can fail, just as much as a colour version can. Therefore, shooting the same scene in black and white isn't always the answer. You can use colour for mood in a shot and to help influence the way the viewer views that result. And in black and white, you can use tones and shape to do that. So 
So I shoot black and white with all my cameras and each one has been set up to shoot a high contrast black and white JPEG to assist me with visualizing the final result. My favorite camera for shooting black and white though is the Fuji X-Pro2. Not because of its black and white results, but because I can shoot and see the world in color through the optical viewfinder or flip over to the electronic one to see it in black and white with this set to monochrome. Again, this camera can be seen as a poor man's Leica in many ways, especially the monochrome series. It takes a, a company like Leica to offer versions of their cameras that can only shoot black and white. My dream camera then may be a Leica rangefinder, but one that can only capture black and white images, coupled with my favorite focal length, 35 mil. With this, I reckon I'll be ready to take on the world. Shooting black and white then is a skill all of its own. It's a medium that sadly we often see many haphazard examples of, simply as the photographer has probably approached it in the wrong way and, and not given it the respect it deserves. But if you want to add mood to your shots, if you want to simplify your results, if you want to start seeing the world differently and give your results a new impact, and yes, if you do want to take dramatic shots even in the middle of the day, making use of those harsh shadows, then I suggest giving black and white a try. If black and white makes me look this good, imagine how the world out there looks. I'll see you next time. Oh, remember to check out my website for my new ebook, as well as all the others available for download.